Well, welcome back to the Sky News debate. And with PMQ's back in a short while, we're asking today, is politics sexist? Laura Bates, founder of the Everyday Sexism campaign, the broadcaster Matthew Stadlin and the feminist author Julie Bindle are still with me. But first, let's get the thoughts of our own political correspondent, Anushka Astana. At this end of Parliament, there's a statue of Emmeline Pankhurst, the godmother of feminism. At the other end, a statue commemorating women's involvement in World War II. So what would these inspirational women make of this place today? Well, things have changed in recent years. We've had more female MPs. It wasn't very feminist to call them Blair's babes, but the arrival of so many women in 97 was significant. The Tories got a few more in 2010, and that has changed the atmosphere. One woman MP tells me more deals are done in office hours and a fewer are done over a pint in the evening. So that's good. But we've all seen what's been happening in the chamber, even the prime minister with his calm down dear moment. One female MP told me she went in there in a skirt, sat down, and a man opposite started shouting knickers at her. So some things still pretty bad. And we all saw the very male front bench of David Cameron's cabinet. Well, he changed that at his recent reshuffle, but it wasn't great that they were depicted as the cabinet catwalk on the way to Downing Street. So I guess I've got to mention journalists too. I've been working here for a number of years. I think you'll find that there are women in the vast majority of newspaper offices up there but let's be honest, not very many of them at the top positions. I think Emily might have a look at Parliament and think we could do better. Well, don't forget that you can join the debate too. You can tweet us on at Sky News, including the phrase hashtag Sky Debate, text on 84501 or email news at sky.com to let us know what you think or if there are any points you want to put to the guests here. We'll read some of the comments out as we go along. And let's bring in Julie Bindle now. She's uh, uh, in our Westminster studio. Uh, Julie, you heard Anushka's report there, people shouting knickers at ladies in skirts. I mean, we are looking at the politicians here and we're looking at, uh, at them because it's Prime Minister's questions today. But is this just a reflection of, of our society as a whole, do you think? I think it's far worse because, as I said earlier, um, the kind of sexist behaviour, sexual harassment, sexist humiliation that many female MPs face from male MPs, you know, is the type that would be dealt with very efficiently and quickly compared to how it is in Westminster. We just have to look at Lord Renard and the scandal around that. We have to look at Mike Hancock MP, um, who has admitted to being sexually inappropriate with one of his vulnerable constituents. And it actually took three years for him to be suspended from the Lib Dem party. And this was after a major fight by uh, the complainant and by, his, by her lawyer. So what I want to look at is why on earth we're still facing this awful state of affairs when feminism um, is, you know, we're into five decades now of the second wave of feminism and when there are many, many women who have actually called this behaviour out. It's totally endemic within Westminster and, and male politics. Let's bring Matthew Stadlin back in. Matthew, is it the case that, that men are just, they're just cleverer, they're just better, they're just more suited to politics? Obviously not. <laughs> Absolutely, obviously not. I can't imagine who you could have rung up to come and sit here and say, to make that argument. The examples we've just heard are appalling. And I'm not here to defend that sort of behaviour from MPs and the extent to which it still seems to be a problem is shocking. One small step in the right direction that I should point out is that very recently babies are now allowed to be taken through the voting chamber and, the f and th that's important because MPs vote until 10 o'clock still on Mondays which makes family life difficult and what was significant about that was the first person to take their baby through the voting chamber was a man, it was the hu husband MP of Joe Swinson who's a Liberal Democrat woman MP and he took the baby through the chamber, presumably because his wife was working. That's a wasn't step a in the right MP, direction. Though, was it? That would have been a real step in the right direction. He it would have been a male. male he was a male MP who took, who took the baby through the voting chamber, and that's, I think, a, 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 re a really good sign. We're talking there about examples of sexism in politics, and we haven't really mentioned your website enough. Since agreeing to come on to this debate to defend the position that Britain is no longer a sexist society. And I instinctively and, ex and, and through my own experience haven't felt that we are. I have been really shocked by talking to friends and family, both women and men, the extent to which there are still major problems. And one of the learning curves that I've gone on is looking at your website. I think it's nearly 100,000 examples now 
of sexist behaviour, low level to extreme level. I think that is certainly worth mentioning, and you should, you should definitely talk about it. I would just say one more thing, though, in defence of my broader position, which is I looked into figures for pay, equal pay, and of course now law backs up women just as much as it does men, and that's very important. In the age gap between 20 and 30, women, in fact, in full-time work, not in all types of work, but in full-time work, out-earn men at the moment. And between 30 and 40, men only marginally out-earn women. It's after that it becomes a real problem. So I think we're moving in the right directions, but the examples, the 100,000 examples that you have brought out of society are truly shocking. I mean, on, on the subject of equal pay, we are moving in the right direction. The pay gap, though, is still 10%, and equality, true equality, according to the force of society, will be achieved by 2067, which is good news for, for all babies being born today. All girl babies will only have to work for 53 years before they get any kind of equality and pay so some would argue it's not moving fast enough quite frankly absolutely i mean i think the crucial phrase that you used there was in my experience in your experience you haven't found us to be living in a sexist society well i think there's a reason for that because it is by and large women who are experiencing sexism and i just don't think that you can argue that as a society we aren't sexist when we live in a country here in this country where the full-time pay gap is uh, 15 percent altogether the pay gap overall is 15 percent the full-time pay gap sorry is 10 percent where two women a week are killed by a current or former partner, where a woman has a one in four chance of being a victim of domestic violence, over 85,000 women are raped every year, and everywhere you look, women are underrepresented. You mentioned law. There are seven out of 38 law justices of appeal who are women, 18 out of 108 high court judges. Women are one in 10 of our engineers. Women write one fifth of front page newspaper articles. Only a fifth of our architects are women, Can but 63% of them have reported sexual harassment in the course of their careers. Everywhere you look, I think you'll find that the statistics back up this problem. The judges, even if you haven't the judges' statistic it. doesn't surprise me because you, ha you have to be a barrister for 30 or 40 years before you become a judge, and they come from a time where we were definitely a lot more sexist than we are now. But if you look at the uptake in the bar, which is a traditionally stuffy male dominated profession, three of the last six years there have been more women called to the bar than men. Okay. And that has to be a good thing. But I counter that by telling you that a recent study by the HECSU showed that women graduating doing law from the same universities, the same subject as their male colleagues, at graduate level are earning £8,000 less. So I don't agree with your argument about the pay gap. It's happening at graduate level. It's happening before you even start talking about maternity discrimination. And on top of that, I have received 100,000 stories from women who are being shouted at every time they leave the house. Thousands of women who've been masturbated on, on the tube. Girls at school who are being told to get out their breasts in the classroom or get back in the kitchen. Page three of one of our biggest newspapers Appalling. is a top Appalling. woman. Except How can you argue it's not a sexist society? We're going to have to, we're gonna have to give you the, the last word, Laura. Uh, well done. Uh, Matthew Stadlin, great to talk to you. And Julie Bendel in Westminster, thank you both very much as well. Uh, don't forget, we do want to hear uh, what you think uh, about uh, Sky News debate. Do keep in touch with us.